It's always sad losing a pet. And for us ant keepers, when we lose ant colonies, especially ones we've had for years, it's truly a sad event. Today I announce the loss of one of the greatest OG ant colonies of this channel. But there's something else I have to share. Welcome everyone to the Ants Canada Ant Channel. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon. Welcome to the AC family. Enjoy. Well, for those of you who've been following this channel for a while, the title of this video may have come as a shock to you. But it's true. All the queens of the original Golden Empire, my longtime super colony of yellow crazy ants, have died. But I do have some good news, which I'll get into in just a moment. I also will be needing all of your help with making a very big decision. So get your voting fingers ready, guys, and stay tuned for the important voting session taking place later in this video. For those of you who are new, the Golden Empire is one of three OG ant colonies on this channel. OGs because for me, they were the first star ant colonies featured on this channel at the time when we, the AC family, really grew and hit our first million subscribers. The first OG colony was the Fire Nation, our former fire ant colony, whose Queen's death anniversary will be this November. Rest in peace, Fire Nation and Queen Solis. You may know the Fire Nation from our My Fire Ants Are Planning an Escape video, or Fire Ants Devouring a Cockroach While Giving Birth video. The second OG ant colony is the Dark Knights, our black crazy ant super colony, who are still alive and well, and technically will continue to survive forever, as these ants don't require traditional nuptial flights like regular ants, and queens and males can inbreed within the nest without genetically inbreeding, a biological DNA hack these black crazy ants have up their sleeves. So I expect them to never reach their life's end anytime soon. However, the Golden Empire, as many of you may know, has had a long and turbulent history. So long, I prefer to not get into all the details now. But essentially, the colony was raised in an AC setup, then moved to their first terrarium we called the Hacienda del Dorado. But one day out of nowhere, the colony got infected by vampiric, blood-sucking mites, which reduced the huge super colony with multiple queens to a weakened colony of a few hundreds. I managed to isolate a portion of the survivors in quarantine and treated their vampiric mites with predatory mites harvested from rhino beetles, of all places. I know, random. And since then, over the course of over a year or so, I've been trying to get the colony to grow back to their huge numbers. And though they grew a little bit over time, for some reason they weren't reaching the same numbers they used to be at. Then finally, the queens began to disappear one by one starting about a month ago, with the last remaining queen of the colony passing away just last week, leaving a couple hundred workers to live out the rest of their lives without a queen or brood to care for. I'm so sorry, AC family. I tried everything I could. But I do think the mite plague really weakened the remaining Golden Empire queens, and or the queens had finally approached the end of their own lifespans and simply weren't the prolific egg-laying machines they used to be during the Golden Empire's glory years. But now, AC family, for the good news. When I noticed the queen starting to disappear a month ago, I struggled to determine when the right time to tell you guys was. In the end, there were two reasons I chose to wait until now to make the announcement of the Golden Empire's passing. First, I didn't want to cast a shadow on all the joy we were sharing together over the Phoenix Empire and their Ember Islands Floating Mountains Paludarium, as that was the Phoenix Empire shining moment in Antiverse history. But the other bigger reason was, I wanted to make sure the Golden Empire's legacy wasn't fully over. And with the bad news of their passing, I felt we needed a silver lining. Or rather, a golden lining. AC family, I'm happy to announce that with the remaining 200 or so workers, I did what I've done a couple of times in the past with the Golden Empire. Colony fusion. I was able to obtain another yellow crazy ant colony and fuse them with the remaining workers of the Golden Empire. Instead of just allowing the remaining 200 or so Golden Empire workers to simply die in their ant farm without purpose, the fusion was successful. But as you've seen in past videos, there's a bit of a temporary squabble a mini ant war, if you will, that happens when the two unrelated yellow crazy ant colonies meet before the two sides call it truce and they start acting like one big super colony. And indeed, 
the new yellow crazy ant colony I introduced ended up forcefully taking our 200 or so Golden Empire workers hostage and later recruited them into their own super colony. And so guys, I'm super excited for you to meet them all now. AC family, behold, the Golden Empire 2.0, or technically 4.0, but you guys know what I mean. The entire super colony is living within this ant farm setup from AntsCanada.com. Let's have a look first at their large AC ant tower. You guys will love this. As you can see, there are several workers running around the surface, busy with nest construction and various other activities. I love seeing how active they are. Pretty sure these ants are from the new batch. But if you look carefully, there's something else here that you might find interesting. There, see that? That, my friends, is an ant cricket belonging to the family Myrmicophilidae meaning ant-loving crickets. This species is Myrmicophilus albicinctus, which amazingly are found exclusively in nests of yellow crazy ants. It's pretty amazing. They must have come in with the new batch. And yes, I say they, as you'll be seeing many more of them when we check out the colony's mother nest in a bit. These wingless non-chirping crickets are 100% dependent on the yellow crazy ants they live with for their survival. In other words, if I were to separate this little guy from these ants, it would die, as it wouldn't be able to even feed on its own. Get this, guys. These cute ant crickets take on the colony scent, and incredibly, the ants actually treat it like part of the colony, even feeding the crickets through trophallaxis, mouth to mouth, as the ants would with each other. Isn't that crazy? They are truly beloved Golden Empire pets that I was pleasantly surprised to see after the recent colony fusion. Okay, moving on to their AC outworld. Lots of activity happening here. You'll see many workers scurrying about. This is where I've been feeding them, of course, and the colony has been eating lots. Here you'll see them feasting on a roach, and over there, you'll see their sweet jelly cup, which they love. But guys, check this out. Also in this outworld are alates. Seer, this is a virgin queen ant, known as a queen alate. She's born with wings and is simply waiting around for the colony's nuptial flight to happen when she can fly away, mate, and start a yellow crazy ant colony of her own. Due to her light coloration, it looks like this queen just recently emerged from her pupa. She'll be much darker in color in a couple days. Alates usually don't emerge from the mother nest, but it looks like she just wanted to check out our AC outworld here. Also in the colony are these male alates, which look a lot smaller and more wasp-like in appearance. They're also waiting for a nuptial flight, so they can mate with queen elates in the air before dying, as mating is sadly their only purpose in the ant world. Enjoy your time, fellas! So we've seen the ants in the ant tower and the outworld, an ant cricket and some elates. So now it's time to see the mother nest in their AC hybrid nest. Opening the nest. And behold, our new revitalized golden empire. First, look at the size of those massive Queen Alate cocoons! This is actually the first time I've ever seen Yellow Crazy Ant Alate cocoons. The new batch came in with a lot of these Alate cocoons, and they're just massive! Pretty cool, right? There you'll see some regular brood piles on the right. There's a male Alate running around. Check out all those eggs and young larvae being carried by workers. I just love checking out all these nursemaid workers acting as babysitters of clutches of brood. Within their loving mandibles are cradled the future generation of Golden Empire ants. There's even more brood. Oop, and there's one of the queens. It also looks like this is where they've made their temporary graveyard. Interesting that these ants keep their dead inside the nest. Also a good tactic so they remain discreet from outside predators. And there's another queen elate. This here seems to be the site of a lot of trophallaxis going on. See the ants kissing? And if you look carefully, there, another ant cricket. There are many ant crickets in this mother nest. Isn't it amazing how they roam freely, unharmed, treated simply like one of the ants?
There's another egg laying queen. And a springtail waiting to eat up the colony's poop and garbage. And more brood. Here's one of the most beautiful sights. Check out this entourage of workers surrounding this queen. They keep her clean, well-fed, protected, and judging from the worker latching onto her leg, in place. In the Golden Empire, I believe the workers call the shots as to where the queens are allowed to be. I'm assuming for their own good. It's a common misconception that queen ants have power and make decisions for a colony, but the reality is, though queen ants are indeed important members of an ant colony, queen ants actually don't have much power. In the world of ants, decisions are generally made collectively as a colony and not by any one individual in power. Interesting, right? From what I've counted, this upgraded, revitalized Golden Empire super colony has around 20 or so egg-laying queen ants. I use the word super colony on this channel, by the way, when referring to a colony with many queen ants. One thing I've been wondering regarding all these elates, though, is if yellow crazy ants are like black crazy ants, in that they can mate with their own within the nest without an actual nuptial flight. The old Golden Empire, to the best of my knowledge, never actually got to the full-blown elate production stage. So this situation is quite new for me. Imagine if this super colony could self-perpetuate and live forever too? Assuming we don't have any sudden catastrophes like a mite plague or something. We'll see and keep our fingers crossed. Now we see family, we finally come to the part of the video where I'll be needing your help. It's time for us to be like the ants and collectively make a big decision for this colony. At the start of the video, I mentioned I'll be needing your votes on something important, and it's this. I've been wondering, do you guys feel we should keep the name Golden Empire for these ants? As some of these ants here are indeed part of the original colony, and even the original colony was colony fused twice in their past, yet they still retained their name Golden Empire. Let me know your thoughts, AC Council. Under the pinned comment of this video, please hit the thumbs up on the post indicating Golden Empire if you feel these ants should keep their name or hit the thumbs up on the post indicating new name if you feel the colony needs a new name. Feel free to leave your reasons as to why you chose the option you did so we can all have a look and debate over this. If the colony takes on a new name, it will lose its official flag, which is only given to outstanding colonies that have stood the test of time and made considerable contributions to the Antiverse and won't be considered the same OG colony. We'll be treating it like a brand new colony on the channel, with its own brand new playlist as well. So I guess the bigger question is, when you look at these ants, does it feel like the soul of the Golden Empire exists here among them? Or do they feel like a totally different colony to you? Now, if you're one of the people who feels like this colony should have a new name, do leave your new name suggestions in the comments, and the AC Senate and I will review them and choose a top five for all of us to vote on in a future video. Feel free to also thumbs up any name suggestions you see and like that others post, so they get bumped up where I can see them. Personally, I'm okay with either option. It would be cool for these ants to keep their OG status and official flag, still calling them the Golden Empire. But it could also be cool giving the colony a totally new name, seeing as this can technically be seen as a fresh start. And perhaps some of you newcomers might like to know that you've been following this newly revived colony from their quote-unquote start. And while you're at it, feel free to also leave name suggestions for the ant crickets too. I think they deserve some really cool names as well, as they are a first on this channel and are quite amazing in their own right. So with lots of brood on the way, many egg-laying queens expanding the colony, even a generation of elates on the way, and cohabiting nestmates, it looks like the future of the Golden Empire, or whatever you guys choose to call them, is bright. And speaking of bright, it seems like there's a commotion starting due to my bright camera lights. Yep, looks like the colony is starting to move the brood out now into the outworld. Let's close the nest for now and give them the darkness they love. The future of this yellow crazy ant colony is in your hands, and I can't wait to see what lies ahead for these yellow crazy ants.
All right, and now to talk about their future terrarium. AC family, did you enjoy today's episode? I can't wait to go over my ideas for the future paludarium home for these yellow crazy ants. And of course, you will all be voting, just as we did together for the Phoenix Empire's Ember Islands. I find we're better decision makers as a group, wouldn't you say? If you have any design ideas on what their future home should be, do let me know in the comments. But otherwise, Yellow Crazy Ant home building and voting starts next week. So if you haven't yet, do smash that subscribe button and bell icon now and hit all so you get notified at every upload. Also, don't forget to hit the like button every single time, including now. It would really mean a lot to me, guys. Thank you. AC Inner Colony, I have left a hidden cookie for you here. If you would like to see extended play footage of the new Yellow Crazy Ants, as well as a certain surprise. So do check it out. And guys, did you know that it's anting season in the Northern Hemisphere? And you don't even need to leave your home to start an ant colony. You can catch pregnant queen ants from the safety of your own backyard, balcony, or open window starting this month. Be sure to visit AntsCanada.com for all your ant keeping and collecting gear shipped to you in a special package from our ant loving facility in the USA. So you can get the most out of your ant keeping experience. We ship worldwide and also offer full email support if you need our help. We also have a helpful forum and ant colony trading marketplace on the site. Visit AntsCanada.com today. And now it's time for the AC question of the week. Last week we asked, what is giving our shrimp their new color? Congratulations to Finley, who answered, their diet. Their color depends on the things they eat, so now they are brown. Congratulations, Finley. You just won a free ultimate ant keeping handbook from our shop. In this week's AC question of the week, we ask, what makes ant crickets different from regular crickets? Leave your answer in the comments section, and you could also win a free ultimate ant keeping handbook from our shop. Hope you can subscribe to the channel as we upload every Saturday at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video to help us keep making more. It's Ant Love forever. Thank you.